Okay. Chris Graham here for Trailblazer RV. Today we're going to do a new RV orientation for a 2019 Sportsman LE 220RD LE. Now we'll start right here at the front of the trailer. Here at the front of the trailer you've got your propane system and your battery system. Uh, for the, to access the propane tanks you can lift up this little flap here or you can just lift the cover right off like so. Two 20 pound propane tanks, both of these are full right now and you have an automatic switch over propane regulator. Uh, so you can see that the regulator is pointing at this bottle that makes this the supply bottle and this the reserve bottle. Um, so we recommend that you open the valve on both bottles. When you open the valve on a propane tank, turn the knob nice and slowly until you hear a little uh, propane start to flow through the lines and then open it all the way. With the uh, propane regulator selecting this bottle, um, there's a little sight glass right in the front here, a little hard to see, uh, but it's... Uh, uh, the sight glass is clear right now, showing that uh, propane is flowing. As long as you've got both valves open, when the first bottle is completely depleted, the sight glass will turn red, but the RV will continue to pull propane from the reserve bottle. At that point, you can switch the regulator over to the second bottle, remove the first bottle to go and refill or exchange it uh, without ever shutting down your propane system. Uh, behind the propane system is your battery. This is a single 12 volt deep cycle RV marine battery, uh, but it is an upgraded battery. This is the uh, group 31, so it's a larger uh, 12 volt battery. Um, and uh, you've got two, two uh, uh, leads coming to each post. Uh, so the black Two black wires go to the negative post. The two red wires go to the positive post. Uh, this RV has a uh, optional solar charging system installed on it. So the larger leads are the power leads right from the RV. The smaller leads are the uh, charge lines from the solar panel system. Uh, we, we recommend with the 12 volt battery that you take it out uh, for storage when you're storing the RV over the winter. Um, take it out, store it inside somewhere where it's not going to freeze, uh, and also uh, recommend uh, sometime over the winter if you have a, a battery charger, uh, put a put a trickle charge on it uh, once over the course of the winter just to keep it from from discharging. Behind the battery, you've got a battery disconnect switch on this trailer. Um, so uh, green that shows that the battery is engaged. Red would mean disconnected. So anytime you're putting the RV into storage for a little while, um, but uh, not necessarily winterizing it, you can turn off your uh, battery dis disconnect to disengage your battery. To make sure that it uh, that it doesn't uh, go dead. Um, it's worth noting that uh, the solar panel system on this. Uh, RV is, is installed independent from the battery disconnect switch. So your battery will continue to charge uh, via solar panels even when the battery disconnect is uh, disengaged. Follow me around the side of the trailer. Here we've got your pass-through storage. Uh, and a couple of notable things in here. Uh, one is your power cord. It's a 30 amp power cord, and a lot of RV sites that you visit will have 30 amp power at them. Uh, we also supply a park adapter to break that down to a conventional 15 amp household style power outlet. Uh, also inside here is your sewer hose. This is a brand new uh, 20 foot uh, medium heavy duty sewer hose. Um, uh, it just attaches right onto the uh, plumbing termination system. Uh, it's stored in the front storage compartment for now, but a good place to carry that uh, once you begin using it uh, and are traveling is the rear bumper. I'll show you that when we get there. Also just inside the storage compartment here is your solar panel charge controller. Um, that's where the main, uh, uh, the main uh, 
Okay, guts of the solar panel system are installed, but there's also a remote panel accessible from inside. So there's very little that you should ever need to uh, access that for. Uh, also some plumbing access uh, in behind here, uh, just by removing the, uh, removing the panel, should you ever need to. Um, right next to the storage compartment is your fresh water system. Uh, so you can fill your fresh water tank from here, uh, or you can hook up to pressurized city water from here. Uh, for either of those, you can use just a conventional garden hose, but what we recommend is one of those white drinking water specific hoses, just to ensure that you don't get that uh, plasticky garden hose taste in your drinking water. Uh, also, if you're hooking up to the city water connection and utilizing pressurized uh, water from the source, uh, we recommend using a water pressure regulator uh, just to maintain uh, an optimal uh, operating water pressure in the RV. Make sure you don't overpressurize any lines that could lead to water leaks. Sorry for the construction zone next door. Um, here at the uh, uh, plumbing termination, this is where you'll hook up that sewer hose. So hook the end of the sewer hose onto here, other end goes into the ground, and then you have two valves, a larger black sewer valve and a smaller gray, uh, gray water valve. Uh, always dump your sewer first, your black tank first. Uh, once the uh, contents of the black tank have run through the hose and you can hear that it's not uh, draining anymore, close that valve, open the gray valve to use your sink and shower water to kind of flush out that sewer hose. Just make for a little more pleasant uh, removal of the sewer hose. Um, and then you have a black tank flush system here as well. So when, you're, when you've uh, got your sewer hose hooked up and your black valve open, if you hook a garden hose up to here, uh, preferably not the same hose that you use for your water system, um, you can uh, uh, spray out the inside of the black water holding tank just to clean off the, the walls of that tank and keep the monitor panels, uh, monitor probes uh, clean and reading accurately. Here at your running gear, a couple of things that are worth noting. We've torqued your wheel nuts to 100 foot pounds and we've inflated your tires to 65 PSI. Uh, and we do recommend running the tires right at 65 PSI. It's stamped on the sidewall of the tire, 65 PSI cold. Um, so go ahead and run them right at that pressure. And we uh, recommend uh, retorquing your wheel nuts periodically as well. Uh, if you have a torque wrench, uh, they're torqued to 100 foot pounds. Uh, even if you don't, uh, just uh, uh, tighten those up, make sure they're good and tight uh, periodically uh, before a long trip. Um, and here in the center, uh, there's a removable cap here with a flathead screwdriver. You can pop this cap off to access your easy lube axles. And there's a removable rubber, uh, rubber piece in there to expose a grease zerk. And you can use a grease gun to grease your inner and outer wheel bearings. Uh, now, easy lube axles don't eliminate the need to repack wheel bearings, they just prolong it. So instead of repacking wheel bearings every year, maybe you'll repack your wheel bearings every two or three years. This is where your power cord uh, hooks up. We showed you that inside the storage compartment. On all four corners of the trailer, there is stabilizing jacks. Uh, so when you get the trailer spotted on the campsite and relatively level, uh, you can crank down these stabilizer jacks to be snug with the ground but don't actually lift the trailer with them. They're not designed uh, to lift that much weight. Uh, they're just designed to widen the stance of the RV and take some of that side-to-side -side motion out, out of the trailer. So easiest way to level, level the trailer side by side is to back it up on blocks. Uh, if you're in a very unlevel site, you can use uh, standard two by sixes or uh, you can use our RV Traveler's Choice leveling blocks. Uh, they uh, uh, they're plastic and lightweight, they fit together like Legos and just a little more reliable when it comes to leveling. Spare tires mounted on the back of the trailer. Uh, it's important to note that the trailer doesn't come with a jack or a wheel wrench. Um, 
uh, no trailer does and uh, typically the tow vehicle uh, that you have will have a jack that's more than capable of lifting the RV to change a tire uh, but I always do recommend that you just uh, check the wheel wrench that comes with the vehicle because it may not fit the lug nuts on the trailer um, it's not never a bad idea uh, to be prepared and uh, uh, pick up a, a little star wrench or something to keep in the trailer as well this is the the uh, bumper that the sewer hose can store in. Black plastic cap just pulls out and uh, uh, fits in with friction. Here you have the hot water tank. This is a suburban uh, direct spark ignition gas electric hot water tank. So it can run on electricity or propane. Uh, if you're going to run it on electricity, there's a little black rocker switch down here at the bottom of the tank. That'll need to be turned to the on position. There's also a secondary switch inside that'll need to be on to run it on electricity. For now, I'm gonna leave that switch off uh, just to prevent uh, the possibility of ever accidentally starting up the electric hot water tank with no water in it. This trailer is in the summarized position. So that means we've already installed uh, the plug in the bottom of the tank and uh, watered up the system um, so uh, uh, when you go to winterize this trailer you can drain the hot water tank by pulling the plug out of the bottom here um, and when you pull that plug out on the end of the plug there's a rod that's about this long it's called an anode rod um, and the function of the anode rod is to corrode over time to help preserve the inside lining of the tank so that anode rod after a couple of years will get quite pitted and corroded looking uh, but that's perfectly normal it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do it does need to be replaced once it gets down to just the tiny little bar inside um, but depending on the quality of the water uh, that's uh, that's not typically more often than every three or four years um, the other thing that's notable in the hot water tank here are these two little black reset buttons uh, should you ever overheat the tank i.e. start up the tank with no water in it you may trip these uh, ECOs uh, energy cutoffs so uh, if you're ever trying to start up your hot water tank and it's not starting um, the first thing to check is uh, propane make sure that you haven't run out of propane uh, the second thing you could check would be come out here and press in on these two buttons just to make sure that they haven't uh, tripped they'll need to be reset before you start the tank again the only other thing that I like to point out at the hot water tank is before you remove the plug or the anode rod in the winter and uh, just make sure you release the pressure from the tank using the pressure relief valve uh, the RV's water system is pressured up to a, about 40 psi so you won't want to uh, pull this plug out before you have bled the pressure off of the system and you do that just by pulling on the pressure relief valve It does um, get a little bit hot. Uh, this this mesh, metal mesh here is exhaust for the propane burner. Um, so just make sure that if you've got young kids around the trailer that they're aware of that, that they don't touch it. Uh, and same goes here for your furnace exhaust. Uh, these two items, when they're operating, uh, can get a little bit hot. You have the smart arm power awning on this trailer. So you can actually control this awning from inside or outside. In order to engage the outside controls, you have to unlock it by pressing and holding the unlock button until the green light comes on. Then you can extend the awning. These smart arm awnings have an optional wind sensor and, and uh, uh, motion sensor for the LED light. This one doesn't have those options, but they can be added at a later date if you're so inclined. So the awning's fully extended now. You can also adjust the height of this awning very simply just by pulling down on the arm. Uh, you can adjust both arms, but usually what we recommend is lowering one side down lower than the other so that you can control where your rain water runs off. Put it back up, just push the arm back up. 
there is a solar charge option here on the front. That's for an optional uh, solar charger uh, that'll just plug right into the trailer. Um, this one having the roof mount solar will never require that, but on other sportsmen's uh, it would be a good option. And we'll head inside. So just to show you how the step works, um, grab with two hands here on the, uh, on the bar, slide the step out, roll it down, and flip the last step. So flip, roll, slide. Here we are inside of the 2019 Sportsman LE 220 RDLE. We'll start right here by the door. You got a couple of switches here next to the door. One is for your main 12 volt ceiling lights. The other uh, backlit blue switch is for your LED awning light. Uh, all the way across the top of the awning canvas, there's a uh, LED light there. Uh, this is where you would control the awning from inside. Uh, so you can uh, extend and retract uh, from there and no need to lock or unlock this switch like you do the, the one outside. Right over here is your remote display for your solar uh, charging system. Um, so it, uh, uh, it gives you a little bit of information here. Um, uh, shows the exact uh, current voltage of your battery which is 13.8. Uh, that is what we would uh, consider to be basically a fully charged 12 volt battery. Um, so uh, um, it, it uh, also shows uh, the amperage and wattage uh, that your uh, panels are currently charging at. Uh, and right now, um, right now basically uh, not charging because that battery is fully charged up. Um, Right below that is your uh, thermostat. This controls your furnace for the RV. Um, so uh, just a really simple operation with the slider on the top. Uh, slide it over to the uh, temperature that you are comfortable with. And you hear that furnace fan kick in right away. The furnace itself is located just near the floor here. And when the furnace starts up, the fan is going to come on and run for 15 or 20 seconds before the burner lights up. I don't know if you heard the ticking there, that was the direct spark ignition lighting the burner. Um, so when the furnace lights up, um, the, uh, um, the fan will run for a few minutes before the burner starts, and when you shut it down, exactly the opposite will happen. The burner will go out immediately, but the fan will still continue to run for uh, 30 seconds up to a minute before it shuts off. With this style of thermostat, one thing that I like to point out is when you slide the slider all the way all the way over to off, make sure you hear an audible click when you move it to the off position. Um, otherwise, uh, all you've done is turn the heat right down, but if the RV's in storage and it's getting very cold uh, over the evenings, that furnace might still be trying to kick in and depleting your battery. So make sure when you go to turn that off, you hear an audible click when you uh, when you turn the furnace or when you turn the thermostat off. Here in the kitchen is your uh, stovetop. Uh, so it's a it's a gas uh, stovetop and oven. The top burners use a piezo sparker to uh, to light them. We're just going to bleed a little air off the propane system here. three uh, we may need to adjust the piezo sparker for the for the front burner here I'll have that done before the uh, before the delivery happens um, the only pilot light that you have to worry about in the RV is in the oven um, when you go to light the pilot 
there's a knob for the pilot light here uh, next to the burner knobs. Turn that over to pilot on, push in and hold on that knob. And while holding that in, light your pilot light right here. Once you see a flame there and the flame maintains, continue to hold the knob in for 10 or 15 seconds for the flame sensor to heat up. Uh, once you release that knob and the pilot light stays on, you can turn the uh, oven up to whatever temperature you require. When you're finished using the oven, you can just you can turn it down to pilot on and just leave it with the pilot operating, or you can just turn it all the way off and relight the pilot next time you need the oven. Your fridge can run on gas or electricity. Uh, to turn it on, Just press the on button um, and uh, some lights light up there. The A for automatic, showing that it it's, will automatically decide whether, whether to run on electricity or propane. If it has electricity available, it will always choose electricity. But if you blow a breaker or the trailer becomes unplugged, uh, it'll know that and it'll automatically switch over to propane so you don't lose the food in the fridge. You can override the automatic to only run on electricity or only run on gas. Um, the only situations where you might want to do that, uh, if you are plugged into a weak breaker, uh, you may opt to run the fridge on gas even though you're plugged into power. Um, or if you want to cool the fridge down faster, you might find that it cools faster on gas than it does on electricity. And having said that, uh, regardless of gas or electricity, it takes several hours to cool an RV fridge down. Uh, so we recommend that you start the fridge cooling the day before you load it up so that it's nice and cold by the time you uh, put your food into it. There's also some temperature adjustment on this model of fridge. Um, the little four, five snowflakes uh, indicate uh, different levels of cooling. I usually leave it on three or four, but you might find that depending on the ambient temperature and the elevation above sea level where you're camping, uh, you may need to uh, adjust that periodically. To turn the fridge off, actually I'm just going to set that back to automatic mode for you for now. To turn the fridge off, press and hold the on button until the lights go out. Beneath the fridge is your power converter. This is the power center for the entire trailer. So if we open that up, we'll find, uh, we'll find breakers for your 110 volt circuit protection and fuses for all of your 12 volt circuits. Uh, it's not uncommon in an RV to blow a fuse occasionally, so we do recommend you have some spare fuses with you. Uh, you have uh, 15 amp and 40 amp fuses, so uh, I recommend you have a couple of extra uh, 15 and 40 amp fuses with you. The other thing with this power converter, uh, when it's operating under load, uh, say you have a, uh, a very dead battery uh, that it's charging or your uh, power consumption is high if you're running your air conditioner and you microwave that kind of thing, uh, you might hear uh, a little bit of a humming or a buzzing sound from the converter. It's nothing to worry about, it's perfectly normal. Um, it just has a, a fan in it that cools it down when it's operating under heavy load. Um, around the back of the trailer, not a whole bunch to uh, discuss here. Uh, the uh, the U-Dinette table folds down into your second bed. Um, your stereo system is here. Stereo runs on 12 volt power. Uh, it's AM, FM, CD, um, and uh, Bluetooth. Um, and you've got a couple of uh, uh, USB charging ports above that as well. Um, the air conditioner is right above my head. Um, we're not plugged into shore power right now, so I won't actually be able to start this up, but uh, a fairly simple operation. You need to be plugged into power to use your air conditioner. Uh, and there's two dials here on the air conditioner. Um, uh, it's in the off position right now. You can turn it on uh, with just the fan running, and there's low and high speeds for that, or uh, low and high fan speeds with the air conditioner running. Um, 
So uh, you can set your fan speeds there. And the other dial is your thermostat control. So the air conditioner will kick on and off as required uh, with the thermostat. Uh, there's no actual temperature uh, temperature settings there, uh, so it's a little bit of a uh, trial and error as you get that temperature dialed in perfectly, um, but uh, uh, that's your thermostat control. You can also, with this uh, air conditioner, uh, you can it's uh, got some directional capability here, um, so you can uh, open and close the uh, airflow uh, from here. Uh, with this one, it's not a ducted air conditioner, so my recommendation would be to always leave these uh, leave these vents open uh, so as not to obstruct your airflow out of the out of the unit. Here in the bathroom, just a couple of notable things. Uh, your monitor panel is located from in here. So you can check the level of your battery, which is fully charged. Uh, fresh tank, which is completely empty right now. Black holding tank, which is completely empty. And gray tank, which is completely empty. Um, here is also where you will uh, activate your water pump. If you're operating off of your water reservoir in your holding tank. And here are your two switches to engage your hot water heater. Um, so uh, the one on the left, is for propane, the one on the right is for electricity. Remember, if you're gonna operate the tank on electricity, you also need to have the black switch on the outside of the tank turned on. And for propane, um, if you turn the uh, red, red light on here, the fault light shows, indicating that the tank is not operating, but in just a second here, we'll hear the burner fire up and that fault light will go out. There you go. And I'm not gonna leave that run. There's some water in the tank, but it's not uh, completely full right now, so I'm not gonna leave the uh, burner run. Right next to your monitor panel is your GFI power outlet. Now this is the, the same as the ground fault power outlets in your house with the test and reset buttons. The only difference is in an RV, this, this is wired in series with the rest of your power outlets. So if you're plugged into power, and you find that you've got no power from any of your power outlets, come in here, press the reset button, and everything should go back to normal. If you've tripped this uh, GFI power outlet, uh, you'll lose 110 volt power to all of your power outlets. When you're using your RV uh, sewer system, you'll want to make sure that you use a good uh, potent uh, RV toilet chemical. Uh, we sell chemical in liquid, uh, powder, and tablet form. Uh, any, any of the uh, three is fine. Uh, most importantly though, when you put some new chemical down into the tank, um, open up the package, pour some chemical into the toilet, use the, use the foot flush here by pushing just halfway down on it to fill the bowl with water, and then dump the whole works down into the tank. That chemical needs some water to activate it, uh, so make sure every time you put new chemical into the tank you put it down with some water as well. Uh, you'll want to put a new charge of chemical into the holding tank immediately after you dump your holding tank, uh, and then it should be fine until the next time you dump that holding tank. After you've dumped it, put a new charge of chemical into the tank again. I think that covers it for the most part. Uh, hopefully you've learned something about the 2019 Sportsman LE 220RDLE. If you have any other questions, you can always get a hold of us here at Trailblazer or visit our website, trailblazerrv.com. Thanks.